staff's recommendation to clean it up. Um, it's basically a direction or a recommendation yeah. to the board to, to do that, I guess. It's kind of a placeholder. So, so the zoning changes don't come from the planning commission, too? That would it would come back through planning commission. But it does, it, in, at least in my interpretation, if you can tell me if I'm wrong, it, it wouldn't hold up the CSM per se. There's nothing that requires the parcel to be rezoned at this time. I would just recommend that we, or that the plan commission's body, consider recommending to clean it up so that I, as staff, can move forward with it and or you know, bring it back to the plan commission. So you said there was a zoning application in here, is that correct, Trustee Mentor? For the consolidation of the parcels, correct? They applied with a zoning application for the consolidation of the parcels, but they did not apply for rezoning. I just think conditioning it on the future and zoning is like, I mean, that to me, I don't know, there's more than one attorney in the room, but to me that sounds like we're saying that the CSM wouldn't go through until that future rezoning happens. So, I mean, can yeah, we make two, can we make, can I make one motion and then recommend? Sure, you can. Re yeah, I'm fine with removing it. It was just, it was something I put in there. I, I understand where you're coming from because there's no time frame on it per se, yeah. right? So, um, I can. You can make a direction to staff, and I can yeah. be comfortable with that too. So, if you want to remove it from the motion, I'm fine and with I that. And I just move to recommend approval by the village board of certified survey map for the consolidation of three existing lots at commercial properties on this parcel per se, so oh, I, see. I honestly think it might have been an error to have it included unless like unless President Rosa is correct in saying that at one point it was part of the development and now since been transferred elsewhere. When it got transferred elsewhere, I mean the zoning should be transferred to the you know the larger property itself. It's just that dry weight. Oh I see. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, any further discussion? Okay. Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. Would you review? Oh, the motion? Just that um, Trustee Amenta mo moved to recommend approval by the Village Board of Certified Survey Map for the consolidation of three existing lots at commercial properties, 4023 to 27 North Oakland Avenue, property owner, Columbia St. Mary's Inc. And seconded by Mr. Wood. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? One. Yeah. Motion carries. Four zero one. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to move that. Um, well, who, who's taking action? The board or the planning commission to resign? Mm -hmm. It's the board. To the, it's the board. Correct. Okay, I'd like to. But does the planning commission move to give direction to the planning director of planning development department to recommend to the board that um, the PDD parcel be rezoned as B1? Correct. Okay, we have a motion. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries by zero. Thanks. The next item up for discussion is to recommend for an ordinance amendment regarding conditional use permit regulations. Director Burke. 
So the plan commission last discussed this back in September, so hopefully everyone had a chance to um, either remember or review the, the video. I had a chance to watch it again myself. I hope I um, updated the proposed ordinance in response to some of the questions that we had. Um, I'm just trying to pull up the note here shortly. One second. Um, so <coughs> So at the September 25th, 2018 Plan Commission meeting, the Plan Commission discussed possible amendments and clarifications to the Village's Condition Use Permit regulations. That conversation stemmed from the denial of an application for a Condition Use Permit that was ultimately reapplied, in quotes, at a subsequent meeting. The Plan Commission discussed the proposed changes attached herein and requested clarification of at least two points. The first was a technicality on what constituted a, quote, new application for, versus, quote, a resubmittal of an application and under what circumstances and process that would be determined. Um, second, the Plan Commission discussed the process and, and required burden of proof needed for the consideration of termination of an existing condition use permit. In regards to the technicality of a new application versus a resubmittal, staff has reworded the proposed language to hopefully avoid the problem. The new wording reads that an application for a similar use under the same conditions and information uh, <clears throat> shall, not be, shall not be considered. This, this hopefully eliminates the confusion of new application versus, versus resubmittal, so it's just a general application, so there's no differentiation there, uh, by treating all applications the same. Based on review of the application, the planning and development director would make the, quote, initial determination as to whether or not the application is for a similar use or under the same conditions and information. The applicant would have the ability to have the plan commission confirm that determination if desired. So if by chance I would say yes, this is the same thing, they essentially would, for lack of better words, appeal a decision to the Planning Commission where you would reconfirm it. If they agree with me, that'd be a, 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 it would stop there, right? They would be in agreement that it's the same. So hopefully by calling an application, they're all treated the same. It would give me the determination to say, this is what I think, this is how I read it. The Planning Commission, however, would be able to confirm that for them. So um, <clears throat> this maintains the Planning Commission's review authority over conditional use permits and avoids the applicant appealed to the Board of Appeals, which would be less familiar with the reasons for the denial. There was also some discussion about whether or not one year was too long to wait for a new consideration, um, but staff believes that if the application qualifies as a similar use under the same condition of information, there isn't much need to reduce that time frame. That timing also coincides with the time frame required for initiating conditional use in Section G. So if you get approved right now for initial use, you have one year to initiate that use. Similarly, if you're denied, you have one year, I would argue, to you know live with that decision. So. The decision essentially lasts for one year under both circumstances, how I've interpreted, you know, moving forward. <clears throat> Excuse me, lastly, there was some discussion as to whether or not the restriction should apply to the applicant versus the use. Um, staff feels that the use and information and conditions surrounding its occupancy are what should be reviewed. All applicants should be treated the same and have the same available process and burdens of proof. Staff believes the new wording makes that clear. In regards to the termination procedures, this item is really just a user-friendly clarification within the code of what could technically already take place. The Planning and Development Department routinely performs enforcements either proactively or upon complaint. A zoning enforcement would be no different. This section simply makes it clear that the Planning Commission shall consider possible terminations of condition uses and under what standards. So with that, a, a revised proposal is within the packet. Um, hopefully, you know, it's been a couple months, so this might not you know, be on top of your head, but hopefully the proposed changes meet with the discussion that was, took place last meeting. Um, if not, once again, there's no huge rush to, to make this happen, other than the fact that I'd like to you know keep moving while we're, while we're still thinking about it. So if there's any further discussion or, or clarifications or modifications to the proposal, I'd be happy to hear them. Um, I believe Nathan has reviewed them, and he can provide comments if he has any issues or confirmation as well. Um, I have questions. Does anybody else have any so under G, let's see, on page 99, um, any conditional use approved by the Planning Commission shall be construed to run with the land. Um, when we do conditional use, is it that mean with the same factors? So just because we approve a daycare, if the next daycare comes in and you know doubles the traffic or has doubled the, the amount of students, so the condition, so the um, the parameters under which the conditional use was approved would be the same. This relates to what if, the, if a new owner takes over or if the land was sold. 
the, um, the condition use application runs with the land, not with the owner or the applicant. A conditional use can be withdrawn if it, if it goes outside the parameters of what was approved. Right, so if, if the plan commission approved you know, a daycare of no more than 90 students, and they went to 120, that could be revoked under new applicant or, or different applicant. But what this would clarify is that if a new owner took over and ran it the same exact way, they would have the right to do so under that previous approval. It doesn't say that. I'm just wondering if it's just like if you transfer ownership of the same Conditional use was approved under the application that was approved. So, okay. um, it's not the use, though. It's not just the use. It's that use with all the. It's that specific application, correct? Okay. I just don't know if it's there. Um, yeah, why would we want a new operator to come back, come in, and? You could choose to do it that way. You could. You could. Modify this. This is you know template language I've taken from multiple. Like it could be a tattoo parlor, but then it would be a biker tattoo parlor. Would want to, you know, I mean, you know what I mean. If the application changed significantly enough from the previous applicant, it would not be allowed to change. But if, right. I mean, you know, a restaurant, right, or whatever, something like that, say, or a, or a bar changes ownership, the actual use isn't changing, it's just who's running it will change. They're still bound by the same approval, you know, the hours of operation, things like that, so. But yeah, but that's a good example. I mean, say it was a restaurant, you know, that served alcohol, and but then it was um, bought by a, an operation that's more of a bar, but that serves food. I don't know if they're, you know, so, the, but it really changes in the nature, I, I mean, so I would say if it changed in the nature, it would be subject to zoning enforcement, which would then either initiate a new conditional use or termination of the previous one. Um, my you pull these my fear is that the word any conditional use approved. It doesn't it change to a, a conditional use approved by the planning commission. But it's still focusing just on the use. Like it doesn't convey to me that that meets all the exact standards of the approval. It just, it sounds to me like what Justin Mitchell just said. If it was a restaurant and had alcohol and it was changing to a bar with some popcorn, like it's still technically the same conditional use. It's, it's a restaurant with a liquor license. So I, I, could, I could try to specify this language, um, you know. And Who makes the determination that the use has changed? So if it goes from tattoo parlor to a biker tattoo parlor or a restaurant, Bar restaurant, a restaurant bar to bar restaurant, who makes the determination? I any conditional use. It'd be, a zoning, it'd be a zoning enforcement based on their occupancy permits. The occupancy permit should have a plan of operations attached to it. If that plan of operations required a conditional use, then the conditional use is attached to it. So every commercial business in the village of Short has an occupancy permit, right? So, and those are reviewed every five years through a renewal program. If at that time it's determined that their that their operations have changed based on what's on file, that would be a zoning enforcement to say either a new one's required or if it went from a permitted to conditional use, that at that point you would say this needs a conditional use goes back to the planning commission. So it's you. Correct. So it's a well, it's a staff determination as to whether or not it meets the zoning code, and then if it meets a conditional use, it comes to the planning commission. But like a liquor license, right? Why transfer it? Like it just bring it back. If it was a conditional use to begin with, and they're changing operators, and yeah. I just feel like it would give us another opportunity to make sure that they are doing deliveries and only parking in the three spots, and you just reinforcing those conditions. Uh, if we get down to J, though, <clears throat> I mean, J makes it pretty broad in what we can do. Like, J2 is the conditional use has had a demonstrably negative impact on the surrounding area. I mean, we, we basically broke it, though. Yeah, right. that's, that's a little more. That's different. Go in and revoke. You know, I mean, it don't. I, I mean, to me, it'd be better to 
I mean, I mean, it may be a situation where like the business is bought out, so it's the same business, but you know, just different owners. So I mean, you get it. But if, if it is a different owner or operator, wouldn't it be better to like do that than rather than have to go in and like you know, kind of use a police power to say you're not living up to the conditions and would yank their permit? You know. Sure, but that puts a whole different burden on a business owner to sell their business, right? Now it's not up to them to say my business performs well it's a good business right. it's it's a good business and you guys have to go see the plan commission to hopefully get them to prove you know otherwise there's zero value to their business all of a sudden i mean that's a huge burden but with their zero value to yank their license right here in jay <laughs> Sure. I'm just saying. But, but we'd be you know yeah, we'll say, technically i think it operates this way currently like i have i have not brought new owners of conditional uses to the plan commission Unless they, unless unless they change operations based on their revised based on a revised plan of operations. Okay, so I think I'm comfortable if it is a condition any conditional use approved by plan commission that transfers with the exact same operating right. plan. I, you know yep. what I'm saying? Yep. Then then yes, it runs with the it doesn't run with the it just it can be transferred.